Hello everyone, it's Attacker Simply T here, and for today, Super Mario Party Jamboree has been out for a week, and I gotta say, definitely one of the best Mario Party games on the Switch by far. Superstars come close, and Super Mario Party was pretty okay, but Jamboree is great, and now this time, this title and installment now features a total of 7 boards, by far the most we were given out of the series, since the past 2 games just gave us 5 boards, some of which are, you know, great, and some actually return from past Mario Party games, so that's pretty cool. However, out of all of these seven boards that are in this game, which of them is the best out of everything in Jamboree? So we're going to be ranking every Super Mario Party Jamboree board from worst to best. Now, before I start, I just want to say that this is obviously my personal opinion and all, and things beg to differ and all. And one thing I do have to mention is that if if your favorite board is like in like the number seven spot or maybe the fifth or sixth, I do want to let you know that I actually don't think any of the boards here are bad. If anything, all of them are pretty cool, decent, and actually well executed. It's just there were some parts of it that I kind of felt a little disappointed from to the point where I actually had to put it into into some lower parts of the area and in the ranking. So I hope you guys understand that I'm not hating on any of the boards. If anything, they are are some great ones but also some pretty decent ones still despite its flaws so with that let's get started ranking every super mario party jamboree board Coming in at number 7, we got ourselves Rollum Raceway, one of the 5 new boards in Jamboree. Now, when I first saw this in the trailer, I was really intrigued. This is basically if Mario Kart got mixed in with Mario Party, and I like the concept of this board entirely. You are literally riding on a race car on this board, and that's what I really like. Though, unfortunately, there really isn't much I could say about this, as the entire board is mostly just a loop, which kind of ducks it down a few points points because that's mostly all you're doing and given to have the two stars are only placed are only placed in like two specific areas on the top and the only thing that did kind of make this different was to have some dividing areas between the upper and lower part of the track and some other events such as if you land on an event space you'll be sent you'll be either you launch away by a giant spring or get chased by a bruiser on a car. So there are some variety that is shown here and you can also get the exclusive board item, the turbo dice, where you can go at a very high speed with the addition of four dices. So that is some cool well, concepts in this one, but unfortunately this does fall flat in execution, which is kind of weird since this was one of my most anticipated boards to play on. It's still a good board to be honest, it's just kind of everything else is just okay when you're mostly going through a loop. At number 6, we got ourselves one of the returning boards that came from the past Mario Party games, that being Mario Party 1's Mario's Rainbow Castle. Now, this is obviously the most simplest board that you can go. You mostly just go through spaces and then go in a loop and then head up to the top of the tower in order to get a star or deal with Bowser in order to get a Zatar, I guess that's how you pronounce that. And if anything, this is kind of a basic and simple board. But you might be wondering as to why I'm putting this higher than Rollum Raceway. A, game, a board that is unique. Well, that's because there are a few things I like, are the changes. Mario's Rainbow Castle has a few quality of life changes, which I do enjoy, and they also introduced the item shop, which wasn't in the original Mario Party game. The music is fantastic, which I love the remix, and I like how whenever Bowser's on the board, the aesthetic and the area changes to a more stormy, dark area, rather than having the happy-go-lucky rainbow areas that we are used to. So, even though this is the most simplest one we were given and you're mostly going in like a same loop all in all in all the changes is what makes this a little bit more higher than one of the newest boards for jamboree overall i know this may be a little controversial but if anything this is number six for a reason Next up, on number 5, we got another one of the returning boards, one of the two returning boards being Mario Party 2's Western Land, one of the most iconic boards that came from that title. It is great to see this, this board returning in a modern Mario Party title. The only thing that does kind of weigh this down, though, is regarding about the train. The train is a little bit more easier than 
what it usually was back in Mario Party 2. Where in Mario Party 2, that game, that board consists of the train, which you basically have to time your jumps in order to get this right. This one feels a little bit more easier that way, and it does have the item shops like it did for, like in the original. But it, yeah, the music the music is great. There are some good uh, events that happens, and you know this is a way a way better board than what Mario Party 2 one has with Rainbow Castle. Since that one goes in a loop, this one can give you a lot more strategy than what it usually is. Alrighty, and after going through two past Mario Party boards and one new board from number seven, now for number four, we are now going through the rest of the other of the newer boards. Starting off with number four being Goomba Lagoon. This is, if not one of the most intriguing boards out there or and, and really there are a few things that you can do you, whenever you go near the Goomba volcano you have a chance to either summon in golden Goombas which you can get coins from or get a bunch or get a lot of lava bubbles which you can lose three coins from from each spaces it, it can only happen in the volcano area and not anywhere else I mean there are some parts of it but it's still a good stage overall the only thing that really one of the there are also some other diverting paths such as going down a ski line you can also go through pirate ships summon some booze which is like every mario party game and also has a few exclusive items such as the the tide shell which that is the main board's mechanic which is kind of what weighs this down the board mechanics biggest part is how the tide usually rises up for like two turns and if you're like playing a game for like 10 turns and basically the entire tide is just like that for like two to three turns then it kind of can be a little bit tedious unless you got like good items like the pipe or or some swat or some warp blocks and you're probably stuck in that area until the tide rises down back into the into the ocean so that's kind of what ducks this down a few points but with some of the bo new boards mechanics with the goomba volcano i will put this at number four Coming in at number three, we got ourselves the first starter board of Jamboree, being Mega Wiggler's Tree Party. Now, yes, this is a one-star board, but making this one of the easiest, good be be beginner boards and all, but it's what its simplicity is what makes it great. Now, I, I know I should have put Mario Party uh, Rainbow Castle somewhere, but with Wiggler Tree Party, there are a few things I like. You got yourselves new mechanics of waking up the Wiggler, and he can move into traversing paths. You can also find beehives in order to get coins from a uh, honey just make sure you don't get the bees you can also do more traversing paths so and you can also ring the bell in order to wake up and move the wiggler as well so it is a pretty simple board but it's definitely a great for beginners now the last two are kind of difficult to rank since I actually like both of these boards all together and but trying to pick which one is number one was a little bit difficult. So after some time thinking I now declare that Bows King Bowser's Keep is now my number two most favorite board in Jamboree. This one right here consists of a few things. You got the imposter Bowser which can which whenever it's its turn he can turn any of the spaces into Bowser spaces so you better be careful and if you have a Jamboree buddy with you then you're basically screwed because you're going to either lose a lot more coins and or likely lose double the stars that you have you can also go through the red pipes you can also see a bunch of mecha koopas which you can stomp on for a lot of coins and go through different pipes in order to go through different areas and most notably whenever you see it in the sledge bro area you can actually get coins by typing in a very specific code which really adds the diversity of this level it's a nice tense of both unbalance and balance at the same time while also having balance uh, being there to be a nuisance which is really like what I like about the original Mario Party games it can be unfair whenever it be whenever it feels like it and that's what makes this board enjoyable so through the process of elimination I'm pretty sure you know what number one is at number one, we got ourselves Rainbow Galleria. A mall, a mall theme board has been one of my most wanted type of boards since like, I'm pretty sure around Mario Party 9. I've always wanted to see what a mall type board would look like. I'd even made a lot of sketches of what a mall board would look like in a Mario Party game. And now seeing this come to fruition really is amazing. And guess what? It did not disappoint. The board is really feeling like you are going through a mall. 
there are three floors into each area. You got obviously the first floor, the second, and the third floor. And each of the floors have their own unique type of mechanic throughout each of them. You got the bottom one, which you mostly is just your simple one, or you can go to the elevator to head to the third floor quickly. Throughout the entire game of game time of this board, you can also be able to get stamps, which uh, depending on how many stamps you get, you'll be getting a few bits of coins. Getting all four stamps will give you a total amount of 50 coins in total. And each boy, and like I mentioned, each of the floors have their own mechanics. This third floor has a bunch of shops from the thrift shop, the golden shop, and there's even a shop that consisted for fourth place, which that's really crazy to have. And for second, and for the second floor, while there isn't much aside from the boo bell, there's also a luck based event where you can get a type five types of marvels, and getting a gold marvel will give you the golden pipe, which you know is still 25 coins in this game, which is perfectly balanced, and it has a nice sense of you know it has a nice sense of vitality and a lot of different types of strategy you can go through this entire mall and what's even better is that every five turns there's going to be a flash sale which every item was going to be 50 was going to be cut in half in terms of price so that's a really good deal right there and whenever you're going through the entire place you can also do other things such as go like you can also trade items for in the thrift shop, it really feels like you're in a mall. And you can't not forget some of the item's biggest mechanics, such as the 200% coupon, which you can give somebody 200% more by basically at doubling the star price to a greater price than ever. So, really, this is a nice mix of balancing, and you cannot forget the item shops, such as the major, well, such as the smaller ones, and also the one coin shop run by Kamek. There, it really feels like you are in a mall. And that's what I really enjoy about Rainbow Galleria, making this my number one most favorite Mario Party board in Jamboree of all time. But let me know your thoughts and opinions down below about this. Which of the seven boards in Jamboree are your personal favorites? Like I mentioned in the beginning, I don't think the ones that are in the bottom are terrible. If anything, there are great, but are, there are some parts that felt kind of poor in execution, and there are definitely better boards than what we pretty much have. But I want to know your thoughts and opinions down below about this. What do you? Which one is your favorite? And so with that, leave like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more videos. Follow my Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember this, once a legend, always a legend.